The floorboards creaked under Samantha Ray's heels as she stepped into the shadowed foyer of Ravenwood Manor. The air hung heavy with the scent of decay and secrets, the faded grandeur of the wallpaper peeling at the edges like a slow revelation. She hadn't set foot in her family's crumbling estate in over a decade, not since the night she'd left for college and never looked back. Now, standing amidst the ghosts of her past, Samantha fought the chill creeping down her spine. The message had been brief, an emotionless summons from a woman she'd once called Mother. Ellen Ray passed on June 13. The funeral is this Friday. Your presence is required at the will reading, Lilith. Lilith. Her stepsister's name was like a thorny vine constricting Samantha's throat. The poisonously sweet girl who had stolen into their lives when Samantha was 16, a widowed Eleanor's last grasp at happiness. Lilith, with her tinkling laugh and razor-sharp smile, a predator wreathed in lace, and the scent of gardenias. Samantha could still picture the triumphant gleam in Lilith's emerald eyes as she flounced into Samantha's room the night before she left for university, waving a delicate hand at the grand manse visible from the window. One day, this will all be mine, she'd cooed. The prodigal daughter, off to chase her dreams, while I remain behind like a good girl. We'll see who mother loves best in the end. A decade later, Lilith's words echoed like a curse as Samantha stepped into the drawing room where the family lawyer waited, Lilith poised at his side like a spider contemplating a trapped butterfly. Her gaze cut to Samantha, lips curving in a poisonous smile. Welcome home, sister mine. Mr. Holcomb, wizened and stooped in his pinstriped suit, cleared his throat theatrically. If you would both take a seat, we can begin. He smoothed a sheaf of papers on the mahogany table with liver-spotted fingers. The last will and testament of Eleanor Delilah Ray. Samantha sank woodenly onto the divan, the cloying scent of lilies from her mother's funeral still clinging to her black dress. She fixed her gaze on the dust motes, swirling in the watery light of the bay window, stealing herself. I, Eleanor Delilah Ray, being of sound mind, do hereby bequeath the entirety of my worldly possessions, including Ravenwood Manor and its surrounding lands, to be divided equally between my natural daughter, Samantha Elise Ray, and my adopted daughter, Lilith Branwyn Moreau. Shock speared through Samantha like a knife blade, snapping her attention to Lilith's porcelain face. Her stepsister's smile only widened, satisfaction rolling off her in waves. Furthermore, Mr. Holcomb continued gravely, it is my wish that Samantha and Lilith reside together at Ravenwood Manor for a period of no less than one year, learning to steward the estate as a team. Only after this time has elapsed can they take full legal possession of their inheritance. He peered at them over his spectacles. Should either of you contest the will or fail to abide by its terms, you will forfeit your share in its entirety to the other. The floor seemed to tilt beneath Samantha's feet, bile rising in her throat. Live with Lilith? With the woman who had tormented her? Driven her from her childhood home? It was her worst nightmare given form. But what choice did she have? To walk away meant losing her last link to her mother. To the happy memories before Lilith's intrusion. More than that, it meant letting Lilith win. Blinking back angry tears, Samantha met her stepsister's smug gaze with a steely one of her own. I accept the terms. Something dark and triumphant unfurled in Lilith's eyes. As do I. She rose sinuously from her chair, offering a perfectly manicured hand to Samantha. To a new chapter, dear sister. As their palms met, Lilith's skin cold as a serpent's. Samantha suppressed a shudder. She didn't know what game Lilith was playing, but she refused to be a pawn. Even if it meant stirring up the ghosts lurking in Ravenwood's shadowed halls. Even if it meant facing the past she'd fought so hard to outrun. She would unravel the twisted secrets of her mother's life and Lilith's past. No matter the cost. The grandfather clock in the foyer chimed midnight as Samantha slipped from her childhood bedroom, a silver letter opener clutched in her fist. Sleep had proven elusive, her mind churning with questions and dread. What secrets had her mother taken to the grave? What did Lilith hope to gain by forcing this unholy reunion? 
Padding silently down the corridor, Samantha paused outside the study door. Faint lamplight spilled from the crack beneath the oak panel, proof that she wasn't the only restless soul in Ravenwood tonight. Holding her breath, she eased the door open. Lilith stood with her back to the door, a tumbler of amber liquid in hand as she stared into the crackling fireplace. Her black silk robe clung to her curves, dark hair tumbling loose down her back. At the soft snick of the latch, she turned, emerald eyes widening in surprise. Samantha, dot, dot. I didn't expect. What are you playing at, Lilith? Samantha cut her off, brandishing the letter opener. This charade. Forcing me to come back, dangling mother's legacy like bait. What do you want? Lilith's gaze flicked to the makeshift weapon, a feline smile playing at her lips. Put that down before you hurt yourself, dear. We both know you don't have the stomach for violence. Don't test me, Samantha gritted out, even as her hands trembled. Not after what you did. What you took from me. What I took? Lilith laughed, a low, mocking sound. She set her glass on the mantle, gliding closer with predatory grace. Oh, Samantha. So naive, even now. Everything I have, Mother gave to me. The daughter she chose. The one who stayed. Hot tears stung Samantha's eyes. She was my mother, too. You had no right, right. I had every right. Lilith hissed, green eyes flashing. She closed the distance between them in two strides, catching Samantha's wrist in an iron grip. The letter opener clattered to the parquet floor. I was the one who held her hand as she wasted away. I was the one who listened to her weep over her precious Samantha, the daughter who abandoned her. Lilith's gaze bored into hers, dark and fathomless. She died with your name on her lips, did you know that? A final apology to her beloved child. Her mouth twisted bitterly. And where were you? Off playing at independence? Turning your back on your family? On me. On. Samantha wrenched away, cradling her hand to her chest. Lilith's words cut like shards of glass, the ugly truth in them undeniable. I had to leave. You know why? For a moment, something raw and wounded flickered in Lilith's expression. Then it was gone, shuddered behind a mask of cold disdain. Yes, I know. Poor little Samantha, always the victim. Well, we all have our crosses to bear. She turned back to the fire, retrieving her drink. The golden light played over her sharp features, casting them in planes of shadow. This house is just as much my inheritance as yours and I have sacrificed too much to let you steal it away again. Lilith's voice dropped to a silken purr, eyes hooded as she sipped her whiskey. We are bound together, you and I, by blood, by fate, by the secrets we keep. Her lips curved. You cannot run from the past forever. Samantha swallowed hard, fear and anger warring in her breast. Lilith was right. There would be no escape, until she unraveled the twisted skein of lies that bound them. Until she learned the truth about her mother's death and the secret that had torn their family asunder. One year, Samantha whispered. One year, and then I never wish to see you again. Lilith inclined her head, a mocking toast. A year is a long time, sweet sister. Long enough for the dead to speak. Long enough for you to realize that leaving was your gravest mistake of all. With that, she brushed past Samantha, close enough that the spicy scent of her perfume made Samantha's head swim. The study door clicked shut behind her, a soft punctuation. Samantha stood frozen, heart pounding in her ears. Lilith's veiled threats looped on repeat, dark and insidious as poison. What lengths would Lilith go to to protect the power she'd finest from a dying woman's hands? What devastating secret was she so desperate to keep buried? With shaking limbs, Samantha sank into the wingback chair beside the fire, eyes drawn to the portrait hanging above the mantel. Eleanor Ray stared down at her, regal and lovely in her youth, a mysterious half-smile playing about her lips. As if she too kept silent counsel, an open grave of unspoken truths. 
Samantha would lay them bare, even if it meant exhuming the past one brittle bone at a time. Even if it meant facing the demons that had driven her from Ravenwood's suffocating embrace all those years ago. Even if it meant shattering the chains of her own heart in the process. As if on cue the grandfather clock told one, a dolorous lament, and the first fat drops of rain began to patter against the leaded glass. The storm that had been building all evening was finally breaking, electricity crackling forebodingly in the heavy air. Lilith's return had set dark forces in motion, a reckoning long overdue, and Samantha had a sinking feeling that before it was over, Ravenwood would demand its pound of flesh. From both of them, the storm raged through the night, lashing the ancient stones of Ravenwood Manor with furious abandon. Samantha lay awake in the cavernous silence of her childhood bedroom, watching lightning paint eerie shadows on the ceiling. Every thunderclap made her flinch, an echo of the tempest raging in her own mind. Lilith's words had unearthed memories, long buried, phantoms of a past she'd tried desperately to outrun. The endless battles of will with her stepsister, the cold ache of her mother's withdrawal, the whispers that had chased her from Ravenwood's hallowed halls. Whispers of madness, of a curse that poisoned their bloodline, a rot that seeped into the very foundation of the house. Samantha squeezed her eyes shut, fingers fisting in the faded damask of her comforter. She would not succumb to Lilith's mind games. She was not that frightened girl anymore, trembling in the shadows of her mother's disregard. She had forged her own path, built a life far from the twisted roots of her family tree. And yet, here she was, drawn back into Ravenwood's dark embrace, shackled by duty and the desperate need to understand. To lance the festering wound of her mother's loss and uncover the truth, Lilith seemed hell-bent on keeping from her. As the first anemic light of dawn crept across the hardwood floor, Samantha rose from her sleepless bed with grim determination. There would be no more running. No more hiding from the specters of her past. She had a legacy to claim. And a serpent to defang. Dressing quickly in a simple black sheath, Samantha made her way downstairs, the house unnaturally still in the gray morning light. She paused at the entrance to the dining room, steeling herself for another barbed confrontation with Lilith. But her stepsister was nowhere to be found. The long mahogany table set only with a single place setting and a silver cloche. A folded note rested against the delicate china, Samantha's name scrawled across it in Lilith's looping script. With a frown, Samantha plucked the note from the table, unease prickling down her spine as she read the missive. Dearest Samantha, I've been called away on urgent business in town. So sorry to miss our morning tete-a-tete. -tete. I'm sure you're quite devastated. Fret not, I shall return by nightfall. In the meantime, do try to stay out of trouble. Oh, and should you find yourself gripped by a fit of nostalgia, I'd advise steering clear of the West Wing. We wouldn't want you stumbling upon any skeletons in our dear departed mother's closet. Now, would we? Kisses. Lilith. The note crumpled in Samantha's white-knuckled grip, rage and trepidation warring in her breast. Lilith's words dripped with false solicitude, a veiled warning wrapped in condescension. Stay out of the West Wing, as if that weren't precisely where Samantha intended to go. Lilith was hardly subtle in her machinations. If she wanted to keep Samantha from their mother's private quarters, there must be something incriminating hidden there. Some clue to the secret eating away at the heart of their family, like a cancer. Leaving her breakfast untouched, Samantha marched from the room, determination quickening her steps. The West Wing had been Eleanor's sanctuary, a place Samantha was rarely permitted as a child. She could still picture her mother gliding down the corridor in one of her many silk kimonos, a pale specter sealing herself away from prying eyes. Samantha's hand trembled slightly as she laid it on the tarnished brass knob, the door groaning on rusted hinges as she pushed it open. Stale air and dust greeted her, motes swirling in the slant of morning sun that pierced the gloom. Sheets draped the furniture like ghostly sentinels, undisturbed in the decades since Eleanor's retreat from public life. With a steadying breath, Samantha crossed the threshold, gaze sweeping the sepulchral space. The sitting room was a museum dedicated to her mother's memory, 
porcelain figurines and crystal vases, displayed like holy relics. But it was the massive roll-top desk in the corner that drew Samantha's eye, its green-shaded banker's lamp shining like a beacon. Trailing her fingers over the scarred mahogany, Samantha eased open the tarnished brass latch, the scent of old paper and leather rising to meet her. Neat stacks of correspondence filled the cubbies, tied with fraying black ribbons. A thick, leather-bound ledger dominated the center drawer, its pages yellowed with age. With a pounding heart, Samantha lifted the tome from its resting place, cracking the spine with reverent fingers. The first page was filled with Eleanor's slanting script, faded blue ink bleeding together in places. As Samantha scanned the opening words, her blood ran cold. My dearest Cornelius, if you are reading this, then I have failed in my mission to conquer the darkness that has plagued our family for generations. The curse has claimed me, as it claimed my father and his father before him, as it will claim our beloved daughter, unless the cycle can be broken. The secrets I have kept, the lies I have told, they were all to protect her, to shield her from the twisted inheritance that flows through our veins. But I see now that ignorance will be Samantha's downfall, not her salvation. So I commit the truth to these pages, a confession ten years in the making a map to lead our daughter out of the shadows and into the light. It begins with a name, whispered only in darkness. A monster cloaked in legend who sowed the seeds of our destruction. Mara Raven, mother of illusions, mistress of the damned. Samantha slammed the journal closed, pulse thundering in her ears. Mara Raven. The name was a dark incantation, ripped from her buried memories. From the night her father vanished, swallowed by Ravenwood's hungry shadows. He had said that name as he pressed a kiss to her brow, eyes wild in the guttering candlelight. Be brave, my darling, he'd whispered. Mara's curse will not claim you as it has me. I will not allow it. And then he had melted into the darkness, leaving her with so many unanswered questions. Leaving her to weather her mother's descent into madness, as Eleanor cloistered herself away with her grief and her secrets. Secrets that were now quite literally in Samantha's hands, the weight of the past suddenly stifling. She didn't want to believe it, didn't want to accept the insidious taint that apparently lurked in her very blood. And yet, how could she turn away from the truth, now that it had finally clawed its way into the light? Shaking, Samantha replaced the journal, shutting the desk with a decisive click. She needed air needed to clear the cobwebs of history from her mind before they could choke her. Lilith would no doubt lecture her about the importance of keeping up appearances, but propriety be damned. She felt like she would scream if she spent another moment within Ravenwood's cloying embrace. Striding from the west wing, Samantha made her way downstairs and out the front door, gulping the crisp autumn air like a drowning woman. The storm had blown itself out, leaving the grounds shrouded in mist and strewn with debris. Fallen leaves crunched beneath her boots as she struck out across the lawn, no destination in mind beyond escape. She had nearly reached the tree line when a flicker of movement caught her eye. A figure, striding purposefully along the gravel drive, features obscured by the fog. For a moment, Samantha's heart seized, some primal instinct screaming danger. But then the mist parted, and recognition slammed into her like a physical blow. Dark hair, broad shoulders, a jawline that could cut glass. Sebastian. She breathed, scarcely daring to hope. As if conjured by her whisper, he turned, piercing blue eyes locking onto hers across the swirling sea of gray. Shock and something fiercer rippled across his aristocratic features, a mirror to the maelstrom raging in Samantha's own heart. Sebastian Kane, her first love, her deepest heartbreak, the man she'd left behind ten years ago, without a word of explanation or farewell. And, if the diamond solitaire glinting on Lilith's finger was any indication, her stepsister's fiancé. Fate, it seemed, had a twisted sense of humor. And Ravenwood's secrets were only just beginning to unravel. Samantha thought. Sebastian's voice was a deep rumble, a sound that once sent shivers down Samantha's spine. Now, it only filled her with a sick sense of dread, the past and present colliding in a dizzying kaleidoscope. 
He closed the distance between them in long strides, the mist swirling around his legs like a living thing. Up close, he was even more devastatingly handsome than Samantha remembered, all chiseled angles and piercing eyes. But there was a hardness to him now, a guarded edge that spoke of wounds never fully healed. What are you doing here? Samantha managed, hating the breathless catch in her voice. She'd imagined this moment a thousand times, scripted the things she would say if fate ever brought them face to face again. But now, with him standing before her, all her carefully rehearsed speeches crumbled to ash on her tongue. Sebastian's jaw tightened, a muscle ticking beneath the stubbled skin. I could ask you the same question. Last I heard, you'd sworn never to set foot in Ravenwood again. The words were laced with bitterness, a jagged reminder of the way she'd left things between them. Samantha swallowed hard, forcing herself to meet his accusing gaze. My mother died. I'm here for the funeral. Something flickered in Sebastian's eyes. A brief flare of sympathy quickly subsumed by a harder emotion. So I heard. My condolences. The words were perfunctory. A polite nothing that made Samantha's teeth clench. As if he hadn't known Eleanor, hadn't been a fixture at Ravenwood for the better part of their childhood as if he hadn't held Samantha while she wept after her father's disappearance, promising that everything would be all right. Empty platitudes from the man who had once sworn to love her forever. Samantha lifted her chin, steeling herself against the onslaught of memories. I know about your engagement. To Lilith. Sebastian had the grace to look discomfited, a dull flush staining his chiseled cheekbones. He glanced away, out over the mist-shrouded grounds. It's a recent development, I'm sure. Samantha couldn't quite keep the venom from her tone. And how long have you and my stepsister been developing? Sebastian's gaze snapped back to hers, blue eyes flashing. Careful, Samantha. You forfeited any right to question my personal life when you left me without so much as a goodbye. The words struck like a slap, the old wound torn open anew. Samantha flinched. Shamed heat crawling up her throat? He was right, of course. She had no claim on him, not anymore. Whatever they'd once shared, she'd severed it the moment she boarded that train and never looked back. But God help her, it still hurt. Seeing him with Lilith, knowing her stepsister had succeeded where she'd failed, it was a bitter pill to swallow. Samantha wet her lips, fighting to keep her composure. You're right. It's none of my business. Forgive me for prying. Sebastian studied her for a long moment, something inscrutable in his expression. When he spoke, his voice was softer, almost pained. Why did you leave, Samantha? Why did you abandon everything? Everyone who cared for you? The question hung between them, weighted with years of unspoken hurt. Samantha's throat closed, tears stinging the backs of her eyes. She wanted to tell him the truth to pour out the toxic secrets that had eaten her alive for so long. But even now, with the specter of her mother's lies hanging over them, she couldn't bring herself to lay that burden at his feet. I had to, she whispered, hating the inadequacy of the words. I couldn't stay here, couldn't live under the same roof as Lilith. Not after everything she'd done. Sebastian frowned, confusion knitting his dark brows. What are you talking about? What did Lilith do? Samantha shook her head, a brittle laugh escaping her lips. It doesn't matter now. It's ancient history. But even as she said it, she knew it was a lie. Lilith's cruelty, her twisted machinations. They were as fresh and painful as the day Samantha had fled Ravenwood, her heart shattered and her spirit broken. And now, with her mother's journal burning a hole in her consciousness, Samantha knew she could no longer run from the truth. The dark legacy that had claimed Eleanor was coming for her. A noose tightening around her throat with every passing moment. She had to find out what her mother had been hiding, had to unravel the mystery of Mara Raven and the curse that had haunted their family for generations. Even if it meant facing the demons of her past. Even if it meant losing Sebastian all over again. Drawing a shaky breath, Samantha took a step back, putting some much-needed distance between them. I should go. Lilith will be back soon and I'd rather not be here when she arrives. 
Something hardened in Sebastian's expression, a shudder falling over his eyes. Of course. We wouldn't want to upset my fiancé. The word was a dagger to Samantha's heart, a reminder of the chasm that yawned between them. She nodded stiffly, turning to leave before the tears could fall. But Sebastian's hand shot out, capturing her wrist in a grip that branded her skin. Samantha stilled, pulse thundering in her ears as he leaned in close, his breath ghosting over her cheek. This isn't over, Samantha, he murmured, the words a dark promise. I know you're hiding something, and I intend to find out what it is, one way or another. With that, he released her, striding past her and up the drive towards the house. Samantha stood frozen, heart hammering against her ribs as she watched him disappear into the swirling mist. Sebastian's return had unearthed feelings she'd long since buried, a tangled knot of love and betrayal and simmering desire. But it had also unleashed a new fear, cold and slithering in the pit of her stomach. He knew her too well, could see the secrets etched into her skin like invisible brands. And if he started digging, started unraveling the threads of her past, there was no telling what horrors he might unearth. Horrors that could destroy them both, and everyone they held dear. Shaking off the dark thoughts, Samantha turned back towards the woods, needing to put some distance between herself and the ghosts of Ravenwood. She'd barely taken three steps when a glint of metal caught her eye, half hidden beneath a spray of fallen leaves. Frowning, she stooped to retrieve it, her fingers closing around a heavy silver locket. It was old, the intricate engraving worn smooth with age and tarnished with neglect. But the initials were still clear, air, twined together in elegant script. Samantha's breath caught, a shiver that had nothing to do with the chill mist racing down her spine. Her mother's locket. The one she'd worn every day until her untimely death. The one she'd been clutching in her pale, wasted hand when Samantha found her that final, awful morning. With trembling fingers, Samantha pried open the delicate catch, stealing herself for what lay inside. But it wasn't the expected photographs of Eleanor's children, or even her late husband, that greeted Samantha's stunned gaze. It was a tiny, meticulously folded scrap of parchment, yellowed with age and speckled with what looked like drops of long-dried blood. And on that parchment, written in a spidery hand that made Samantha's blood run cold, were three words. Three words that would shatter the last of Ravenwood's illusions and plunge her headlong into a nightmare more than a century in the making. Find the key. The blood-stained message burnt into Samantha's mind like a brand, the cryptic words echoing in her skull with every step she took. Find the key. But what key? And what dark secrets would it unlock? She had no doubt the answer lay within the pages of her mother's journal, the leather-bound tome that had already revealed so much about the curse that plagued their family. But to uncover the truth, she would have to venture back into Ravenwood's hallowed halls, back into the lion's den where Lilith lay in wait. Stealing her resolve, Samantha slipped the locket into her pocket and made her way up the gravel drive, the mist swirling around her like a living thing. The house loomed before her, a gothic monstrosity of turrets and shadowed eaves, its darkened windows staring down at her like accusing eyes. How many secrets had these walls witnessed? How much pain and sorrow had seeped into the very foundation, poisoning the ground beneath her feet? Samantha's hand trembled slightly as she reached for the door handle, the metal cold and unyielding beneath her palm. But before she could turn it, the door swung open of its own accord, revealing Lilith's smiling face. Samantha, darling, she purred, green eyes glittering with malice. I was wondering where you'd run off to. I do hope you weren't trying to avoid me. Samantha's heart leapt into her throat, a sick sense of dread unfurling in her stomach. How long had Lilith been back? Had she seen Samantha's confrontation with Sebastian, watched their charged exchange with those calculating eyes? Forcing a brittle smile, Samantha stepped past her stepsister and into the foyer, the heady scent of Lilith's perfume making her head spin. Of course not. I just needed some air. Lilith hummed, a low, disbelieving sound that set Samantha's teeth on edge. I'm sure. It must be quite overwhelming, being back here after all these years. 
so many memories lurking in every corner. The words were laced with venom, a subtle barb that found its mark with unerring precision. Samantha flinched, her hand unconsciously going to the locket, hidden in her pocket. If Lilith noticed the gesture, she gave no sign, gliding past Samantha and towards the grand staircase. Speaking of memories, I took the liberty of going through Mother's things while you were out. Sorting the wheat from the chaff, as it were. Samantha's blood ran cold, a sickening realization dawning. The journal? Thought Ding. Had Lilith found it? Read the damning secret scrawled across its pages? Find anything interesting? Samantha asked, fighting to keep her voice steady. Lilith paused on the first step, her hand resting lightly on the banister. When she turned back to face Samantha, her smile was sharp enough to cut. Oh, a few trinkets here and there. Nothing of real value. Mother always did have a sentimentality problem. Relief crashed through Samantha, so intense it made her knees weak. The journal was safe. For now. But Lilith wasn't finished, her eyes glinting with a wicked light. I did come across something curious, though. A photograph, tucked away in the back of her wardrobe. Samantha's heart stuttered, a cold sweat breaking out along her spine. Oh, whoa. Lilith reached into her pocket, withdrawing a faded Polaroid. She held it out to Samantha, her smile widening. Recognize anyone? With a sense of growing dread, Samantha took the photograph, stealing herself for what lay within. At first glance, it seemed innocuous enough. A candid shot of a laughing couple, their arms wrapped around each other as they posed in front of a towering oak tree. But as Samantha looked closer, the blood drained from her face, a choked gasp escaping her lips. It was her mother. And Sebastian. They looked younger, carefree in a way Samantha had never seen. Eleanor's head was thrown back in a laugh, her red hair spilling over Sebastian's shoulder as he grinned down at her, adoration written in every line of his face. Samantha's hand shook as she lowered the photograph, a roaring in her ears. This couldn't be real. It had to be some kind of trick, a manipulated image designed to torment her. But the proof was there, damning in its clarity. Her mother and the man she loved, locked in an embrace that spoke of intimacy, of a bond that went far beyond friendship. Lilith's voice cut through the static, sweet as poisoned honey. Shocking, isn't it? To think all this time we've been chasing the same man. Like mother, like daughter. Samantha shook her head, fighting the nausea that clawed at her throat. No. This isn't... it can't be... Oh, but it is. Lilith plucked a photograph from Samantha's numb fingers, tucking it back into her pocket. Sebastian and Eleanor carrying on right under our noses. Makes you wonder what other secrets they were hiding. The implication was clear, a knife twist in an already gaping wound. Samantha's mind reeled, struggling to process the betrayal. How could her mother do this? How could Sebastian? But even as the questions hammered in her skull, a small, insidious voice whispered in the back of her mind. What if it wasn't a betrayal at all? What if Sebastian had never been hers to begin with? The thought was too much to bear, a shard of ice piercing her heart. Samantha staggered back, needing to put distance between herself and Lilith's poisonous smile. I... I need to... run away? Lilith supplied, her voice dripping with mock sympathy. Of course you do. It's what you're best at, isn't it? Leaving when things get too hard, too messy. Just like dear old mum. The words hit like a slap. The cruel truth in them undeniable. Samantha had run from Ravenwood, from the secrets and lies that choked the very air. She'd run from Sebastian, from the love that had consumed her, broken her. And in doing so, she'd left the field wide open for Lilith to stake her claim, to sink her claws into everything Samantha held dear. Suddenly, the photograph in Lilith's pocket took on a new chilling significance, a piece of the puzzle slotting into place with sickening clarity. Lilith had known about Sebastian and Eleanor's affair. She'd probably known all along, had been hoarding the knowledge like a dragon guarding its hoard, waiting for the perfect moment to strike to shatter the last of Samantha's illusions. 
And now, with Sebastian bound to Lilith by an engagement that felt more like a shackle, Samantha was truly alone. Cut off from the only people who had ever mattered, adrift in a sea of secrets and lies. But even as despair threatened to engulf her, a flicker of defiance sparked to life in Samantha's chest. A glowing ember of the girl she had once been, before Ravenwood had snuffed out her light. She would not let Lilith win. Would not let the ghosts of the past claim her future. She was a Blackthorn, damn it, and Blackthorns did not break. Drawing a shuddering breath, Samantha lifted her chin, meeting Lilith's smug gaze with a steely one of her own. You're right. I have run from a lot of things, but not anymore. She took a step forward, gratified by the flicker of unease that darted across Lilith's face. I'm done running. Done letting you and this godforsaken house control me. I'm going to find the truth, Lilith. A mother, about the curse. And when I do, there will be nowhere for you to, to hide. Lilith's lips curled a slow, serpentine smile that sent a chill down Samantha's spine. Big words from a little girl playing detective. But by all means, go on your little quest. I'll enjoy watching you fail. With that, she turned on her heel and glided up the stairs, her mocking laughter echoing in the cavernous foyer. Samantha stood rooted to the spot, her heart hammering against her ribs. Lilith's taunts rang in her ears, a siren song of doubt and despair. But beneath it, stronger than the fear, was a wellspring of determination. She would unravel the secrets of Ravenwood, would follow the trail her mother had left in ink and blood. She would find the key, and with it, the truth that had eluded her for so long. Even if it meant facing the demons that lurked in the shadows, even if it meant tearing down the last of her mother's lies, brick by bitter brick. Squaring her shoulders, Samantha marched up the stairs, her footsteps ringing like a war drum. She had work to do, and no time to waste. The journal was waiting, its pages heavy with the weight of the past. And somewhere within them, she knew, lay the answers she sought. Answers that would change everything and everyone, forever. As Samantha reached the landing, a floorboard creaked beneath her feet, a sound like a gunshot in the stillness. She froze heart in her throat, as a figure detached itself from the shadows. Sebastian. He stood before her, blue eyes blazing with a fire she'd never seen. In his hand, he clutched a scrap of parchment, the edges ragged and stained with age. We need to talk, he said, his voice low and urgent. I found something. Something that changes everything. Samantha's breath caught, hope and dread warring in her breast. What is it? Sebastian held out the parchment, his hand trembling slightly. A letter. From your father to your mother. Written the night he disappeared. Samantha snatched the letter from his grasp, her fingers shaking as she unfolded it. The words swam before her eyes, blurred by sudden tears. My dearest Eleanor, it began, the ink faded and smudged. If you're reading this, then I have failed. Failed to protect you to protect our daughter from the curse that haunts our family. A sob caught in Samantha's throat, a lifetime of grief welling up to choke her. But she forced herself to read on, the words searing themselves into her mind. I know the truth now. The truth about Mara Raven, and the key that can break her hold on our bloodline. The key that lies hidden in the heart of Ravenwood, waiting for a worthy soul to claim it. Samantha's heart stopped the locket in her pocket sudden lead. The key. Her mother's cryptic message, scrawled in blood. It was real. But there are forces arrayed against us, my love. Dark forces, who seek to keep the curse alive. They will stop at nothing to prevent the key from being found, to bind our family to Mara's will for eternity. The parchment crinkled as Samantha's grip tightened, fear a living thing in her belly dark forces. Lilith's mocking smile flashed before her eyes, a promise of pain to come. I go now to face them, to buy you and Samantha time. Time to uncover the secrets of Ravenwood, to find the key and break the curse once and for all. Tears splashed onto the parchment, blurring the ink. Samantha's chest heaved with the force of her sobs, 
a lifetime of loss crashing over her in waves. Never doubt my love for you, Eleanor. For you, and for our daughter. You are my heart, my soul. My reason for being. I will fight for you, even unto death. The letter ended there, the final words a jagged scrawl. As if the writer had been interrupted, torn away before he could finish. Samantha looked up at Sebastian, her vision swimming with tears. He knew, she whispered, her voice cracking. He knew about the curse, about the key. And he, he sacrificed himself. Sebastian's voice was rough, his eyes bright with unshed tears. To protect you and your mother. To give you a chance. A chance? The word echoed in Samantha's mind, a glimmer of light in the darkness. Her father had died for this, had laid down his life so that she might live. So that she might find the truth, and with it, salvation. She would not let his sacrifice be in vain. Crushing the letter to her chest, Samantha drew a shuddering breath. We have to find it. The key. We have to break the curse, before it's too late. Sebastian nodded, his jaw tight with resolve. I'm with you, Samantha. No matter what it takes, no matter what stands in our way, I won't let you face this alone. Alone? The word struck a chord in Samantha's heart, a discordant note amidst the chaos. She'd been alone for so long, cut off from the people she loved by lies and secrets and her own stubborn pride. But not anymore. Reaching out, she took Sebastian's hand, twining her fingers with his. His palm was warm and calloused, a tether in the storm. Together, then. Come hell or high water. Sebastian smiled, a fierce, determined thing that set Samantha's blood alight. Together. Always. Hand in hand, they turned to face the darkened hallway, the shadows that lurked beyond. Shadows that held the answers they sought, the key to their salvation. And the terrible, twisted truth that would change their lives forever. The heart of Ravenwood was a place of shadows and secrets, a labyrinth of twisting corridors and hidden doors. Samantha and Sebastian moved through it like ghosts, their footsteps echoing in the eerie stillness. The key was close. Samantha could feel it, a pulsing warmth against her breast where the locket lay. It called to her, a siren song of promise and peril, urging her onward into the darkness. But they were not alone in the depths of the manor. Lilith was there, a malevolent presence lurking just out of sight. Samantha could feel her stepsister's eyes on her, cold and calculating, watching their every move, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. They reached a fork in the passage, two identical doorways yawning before them like the maws of some great beast. Samantha paused, indecision warring with the need that clawed at her throat. Which way? Sebastian murmured, his breath warm against her ear. Samantha closed her eyes, letting instinct guide her. The locket pulsed again. A frantic butterfly beat against her skin. Left, it seemed to whisper. The truth lies to the left. This way, she said, taking Sebastian's hand and pulling him towards the leftmost door. It swung open at their touch, revealing a narrow staircase spiraling down into the bowels of the earth. They descended, the air growing colder and damper with every step. The walls pressed in on them, ancient stone seeping with the weight of centuries. And then, at the bottom, they emerged into a chamber out of nightmare. It was a crypt, the walls lined with dusty niches and crumbling sarcophagi. At the center of the room stood a stone altar its surface stained with the rust brown of old blood. And there, atop the altar, lay a small wooden box, intricate runes carved into its surface. The... that one? Samantha's heart leapt, a wild, desperate hope taking flight in her chest. She surged forward, hands outstretched, ready to claim her prize. But before she could reach it, a figure stepped out of the shadows. Lilith! her face a mask of cruel triumph. So predictable, she purred, circling the altar like a cat toying with its prey. I knew you'd come for it eventually. Knew you couldn't resist the lure of mummy's little secret. Samantha froze, ice flooding her veins. Behind her, she heard Sebastian's sharp intake of breath, 
felt him tense like a coiled spring. Get out of the way, Lilith, Samantha said, surprised at the steadiness of her own voice. This doesn't concern you. Lilith laughed, a sharp, brittle sound that echoed off the stone walls. Oh, but it does, dear sister. More than you know. She reached out, running a finger over the carved lid of the box. You see, I've known about the key for years. Known about the power it holds, the curse it can break. Her eyes flashed, green as poison. And I won't let you take that power from me. Understanding slammed into Samantha like a fist, driving the breath from her lungs. Lilith had known. All this time, she had been manipulating them, leading them on a merry dance while she pulled the strings from the shadows. But to what end? Why? Samantha whispered, the word tearing at her throat. Why go to all this trouble? What do you want? Lilith's smile widened, sharp and feral. What I've always wanted. Ravenwood. The Blackthorn Legacy. The power that comes with it. She leaned forward, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. And with the key, I can have it all. Can bend the curse to my will, make it serve me instead of the other way around. Horror rose up to choke Samantha black and oily in her throat. Lilith was mad. Mad with power, with greed, with a twisted desire to claim what she believed was rightfully hers. And she would destroy them all to get it. You can't control the curse, Sebastian said, his voice low and urgent. No one can. It will consume you, twist you into something dark and terrible. Just like it did to Mara. Lilith's head snapped around, her eyes narrowing to slits. Mara was weak. A fool who let love cloud her judgment, let it steal her power. Her lips curled in a sneer. I am not so easily swayed. She reached for the box, her fingers closing around the lid. But before she could lift it, Samantha lunged a cry tearing from her throat. They crashed to the ground in a tangle of limbs, the box clattering to the stone floor. Samantha scrabbled for it, desperation lending her strength, but Lilith was faster. She snatched it up, cradling it to her chest like a child. Fool, she hissed, staggering to her feet. You think you can stop me? I am the mistress of Ravenwood now. The curse is mine to command. She raised the box high, a triumphant gleam in her eyes. But as she did, the lid fell open, spilling its contents onto the altar. It was not a key that tumbled out, but a locket, identical to the one that hung around Samantha's neck, but for the initials engraved on its surface. LBM. B. Lilith Branwen. Moreau. Tot. Tine. Samantha's breath caught, understanding crashing over her like a wave. The key was not an object, but a person, a vessel for the curse, a conduit for its power. And Lilith, in her arrogance and her greed, had just claimed that power for herself. The locket flared to life, a sickly green light pulsing from its depths. It rose into the air, hovering before Lilith like a malevolent star. And then, with a sickening lurch, it plunged straight into her chest. Lilith screamed, a sound of agony and, and ecstasy twined together. Her back arched, her eyes rolling back in her head as the curse poured into her, filling her with its venom. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. Lilith slumped to the ground, her breath coming in ragged gasps. But when she raised her head, her eyes were no longer green, but black as pitch, swirling with an ancient, malevolent hunger. At last, she whispered, her voice a sibilant hiss. The power is mine. She rose to her feet, her movements jerky and unnatural. The curse had taken hold, twisting her into something dark and terrible, just as Sebastian had warned. And now, it would devour them all. Samantha scrambled backward, her heart hammering against her ribs. She reached for Sebastian, for the solid warmth of him, the anchor in the storm. But he was not there. He stood before Lilith, his arms outstretched, his face a mask of grim determination. Lilith, listen to me. You have to fight it. You have to let it go before it's too late. Lilith laughed, 
a sound like shattering glass. Let it go? Why would I ever do that? She raised a hand, power crackling at her fingertips. I'm the curse now. And you, dear Sebastian, are nothing but a pawn in my game. She lashed out, a bolt of sickly green light slamming into Sebastian's chest. He flew backward, crashing into the stone wall with a sickening crunch. He slid to the ground, his eyes glazed, blood trickling from the corner of his mouth. Samantha screamed, raw and ragged, a wound torn from the depths of her soul. She ran to him, gathering him into her arms, tears streaming down her face. Sebastian, no. Please don't leave me. Not now. Not after everything. He reached up, brushing a trembling hand against her cheek. Samantha, he whispered, his voice a fragile thread. You have to stop her. Have to break the curse. His eyes fluttered closed, his hand falling away. Samantha clutched him close, sobs tearing at her throat. He could not die. Not here. Not like this. Not when they had finally found each other again, had finally begun to hope. A cold, mocking laugh cut through her anguish. Lilith stood over them, her face a twisted mask of malice. Poor, sweet Samantha. Always the victim. Always the one left behind. She shook her head, a parody of sympathy. When will you learn? Love is weakness. It makes you vulnerable. Makes you easy to break. Samantha raised her head, grief and rage warring in her heart. You're wrong, she whispered, her voice shaking with the force of her conviction. Love is strength. It's what brought us here, what's kept us fighting all these years. And it's what will defeat you in the end. Lilith's eyes narrowed, a flicker of unease darting across her face. Bold words, from a girl with nothing left to lose. But tell me, dear sister, how do you plan to defeat me when I hold all the power? Samantha's hand closed around the locket at her throat, the metal warm against her skin. And suddenly, she understood. Understood what her father had been trying to tell her all those years ago, what her mother had died to protect. The key was not a thing, but a choice. A choice to embrace love, to hold fast to hope, even in the darkest of times. And in that choice lay the power to break the curse, to set them all free. Slowly, painfully, Samantha rose to her feet, Sebastian's blood staining her hands. She faced Lilith, the locket pulsing in her grip. You're right, she said softly. I have nothing left to lose. But that's what makes me dangerous. Because I have everything to gain. She held out the locket, the metal glowing with a soft golden light. I choose love, she whispered. I choose hope. I choose to believe that there is a future beyond this darkness, a life waiting to be lived. And I will fight for that future, with every last breath in my body. The light grew brighter, spilling from the locket in waves. It washed over Lilith, over the crypt, bathing everything in its radiant glow. Lilith screamed, writhing in pain as the curse was ripped from her body, the darkness shredding like gossamer in the face of that pure, shining love. And then, with a final desperate cry, she was gone. Vanished, as if she had never been, leaving only a wisp of smoke and the echo of her scream. The light faded, the locket crumbling to dust in Samantha's hand. She stood there, breathing hard, tears streaming down her face. It was over. The curse was broken, the darkness banished. They were free. But at what cost? A soft groan drew her attention. Sebastian, stirring weakly on the ground, his eyelids fluttering. Samantha fell to her knees beside him, gathering him into her arms once more. Sebastian, she breathed, hardly daring to hope. Can you hear me? His eyes opened, blue as the summer sky, clear and bright with love. Samantha, he whispered, reaching up to touch her face. You did it. You saved us all. Samantha laughed through her tears, pressing her forehead to his. We did it, she corrected gently. Together. Just like we promised. He smiled. A weak, wonderful thing. Together. Always. And there, in the heart of Ravenwood, amidst the dust, and the darkness and the echoes of the past, 
Samantha kissed him. A kiss of joy, of triumph, of a love that had endured through every trial and tribulation. A love that would light their way into the future, come what may.